Okay, so at this point, we should have OSPF neighbors established between our switches. So to confirm that, starting with leaf two, I can use the command show IP OSPF neighbors. In doing that, we do have one neighbor established with the spine switch. And we see its identifier number of 10101. That's the IP for spine one. That's what we specify for the router ID that should be advertised. So great. And if I go to leaf one, it should show more or less the same thing, connecting with a neighbor with the spine switch. And there it is, so far so good. And on the spine, this should have two neighbors established, one to each of the leaf switches. And there it is. So this is going to leaf one and that's going to leaf two. Therefore, we should see the loopback IPs for all switches in the routing table for each device. So for that, we look at the routing table now. And full means that we have a fully established neighbor that is able to exchange routing information. So seeing that is a good sign. So if I do a show IP route, and here we'll show some OSPF routes in our routing table. These right here, these are intra, basically internal OSPF routes. So here I see the loopback interface for leaf number one. That's for leaf number two. And these here are the networks from the loopback 254 interface on those devices as well. So perfect. So OSPF routes are being exchanged and it is seen for all loopback interfaces for those two leaf switches. So if I go to leaf one and look at that routing table, so here we do see a lot of OSPF routes that we see right there. So we see that this is from the spine one switch. This right here is, well, that's our cell, which is attached. This right here is from leaf two. And this right here, that's, that's our cell. That is from our interface of loopback 254. And this right here is from, also from leaf two, from its loopback 254 address. And this right here is also the loopback interface from spine one for its loopback 254 interface. So at this stage, we have our OSPF configuration working. All of our devices are connected to each other, respectively based on how they are connected. And they can see everybody's loopback interface IPs, which are important for how they'll be connecting with the different services that we'll be doing next. In our next task, we will start the configuration for VXLAN routing, which involves multicast routing and then defining our VXLAN VNI segments.